In order to understand the powerful effects that light can have on the sex steroid hormones, we need to understand seasonal breeding animals. Now, humans are not seasonal breeders, but if you understand the biology of how light impacts various neurotransmitters and hormones, you'll set yourself up for a deep understanding of what you should do with your light viewing behavior. So several species of animals, many species of animals, in fact, like rabbits and fox and various mustelids like ferrets and ermines change their pelage color across the seasons. This might be kind of a duh, but fox in winter are often white or light gray. And those same animals will be brown or darker colored in the summertime and spring months. Now, those same animals breed in the spring and they shut down breeding. They actually shut down ovulation. They often shut down testosterone production in the winter months. So right now I'm just correlating color of fur with tendency to breed. Tendency to breed, as we know, is going to be related to the levels of sex steroid hormones, estrogen and testosterone. Now, why would these two things be linked? Well, it turns out that dopamine is the link between them. So dopamine has a precursor. That precursor is tyrosine, which, come, which is an amino acid, comes from food. And when dopamine levels are high, as I mentioned before, there's a tendency for more gonadotropin releasing hormone, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, all the hormones that come from the hypothalamic pituitary axis and stimulate estrogen and testosterone release from the ovary and testes. Dopamine basically increases all of that. The precursor to dopamine is tyrosine, but the precursor to a lot of the melanin producing elements of cells that give pigmentation, including for the hair, is tyrosine and tyrosinase, an enzyme. So yes, the same amino acid based pathway and many of the same enzymes that are devoted to dopamine and dopamine increasing the sex steroid hormones are devoted to giving pigmentation to the hair and skin. And this is why in the summer months, when days are longer, animals are breeding more. And this is also why in the winter months, when days are shorter, animals are breeding less. This is also why in humans, many people, not all, feel an elevation in mood in the spring and summer months because of the amount of sunlight they're getting is increased relative to the winter months. Now, some of you may be saying, I love the fall, I love the winter. Sensitivity to light in these dopamine systems has a strong genetic component. So you go to some areas of the world, I have relatives uh, who are Scandinavian, and in some areas of Scandinavia, people know that there's a kind of seasonal affective disorder, there's kind of a seasonal depression, and people get sadder and more quiescent in the winter, there's actually um, less going out, and therefore there's less uh, sexual behavior, there's less... Um, uh, partying and things of that sort. But other people will say, no, during the winter months, I feel great. And I love the holidays around winter, et cetera. So there's a lot of variation, but in general, the pathway is the following increased viewing of sunlight. And it has to be to the eyes. It's not to the skin, increased viewing of sunlight increases dopamine levels in the brain, increased dopamine levels in animals and humans increases the amount of these melanocytes and the activity of these melanin producing cells which give pigmentation to the skin and hair and indirectly increase the amount of testosterone and estrogen and thereby reproductive behavior, feelings of well-being, social interactions, reductions, in anxiety, et cetera. All of which should make sense based on what we've talked about already in terms of the biology and the impact of these uh, steroid hormones on various aspects of the mind and body. So, how does this translate to a protocol? This translates to the protocol of if you want to optimize testosterone and estrogen, you need to get your light viewing behavior correct. It's not just about optimizing your sleep, which is also important. It's about getting sufficient amount of light in your eyes so you have sufficient levels of dopamine. So the simple protocols for that I've reviewed before, but it means getting anywhere from two to 10 minutes of bright light exposure in your eyes early in the day. It is not sufficient to do this with sunglasses, unless you have to do that for safety reasons. It's fine to wear prescription lenses and contacts. If you can't get sunlight for whatever reason, you want to use bright artificial light, but that is absolutely critical for timing the cortisol release properly, limiting cortisol release to the early part of the day, getting increases in dopamine that are going to promote 
the production of testosterone and estrogen to healthy levels. The other aspect of light viewing behavior that's extremely important is to avoid bright light exposure to your eyes in the middle of the night. If you're viewing bright light in the middle of the night, you are suppressing dopamine release. If you're suppressing dopamine release, you are suppressing testosterone levels. So much so that I would wager that a major effect of sleep deprivation on reducing testosterone and estrogen is not necessarily because of the lack of sleep per se. It's because usually when people are not getting enough sleep, they're getting too much light in their eyes in the middle of the night as well. A study on this has not been completed yet, but there are two studies published in Cell and Neuron, both cell press journals, excellent journals, showing that viewing bright light with the eyes in the middle of the circadian night has a detrimental effect on dopamine and therefore has a detrimental effect on things like testosterone and estrogen. So you can't even begin to talk about supplements and other ways to optimize testosterone, diet and its effects on testosterone and estrogen and fertility and reproductive behavior, et cetera, until you get your breathing right, until you get things like your light viewing behavior right. So bright light early in the day and throughout the day is great. View as much bright light, ideally sunlight as you can, as much as you safely can. You obviously don't want to burn your retinas or damage your retinas. So never look at any light that's so bright it's painful to look at. But getting a lot of light in your eyes is not just about adjusting your sleep-wake rhythms. It's also about optimizing your sex steroid hormones.